Hey, welcome to this edition of the Inside Scoop. We are super grateful that you decided to press play. You know, you could be watching anything right now. It is the internet. It is all available for you. But you decided to press play and watch this edition of the Inside Scoop. And for that, both myself and Sarah were super grateful. And we know that you're going to get a ton of value from this conversation because if you've been plugging into the Inside Scoop for a little while or maybe you're brand new, my guess is that, you know, you've got some spiritual gifts. You're on a spiritual path, a journey. Maybe you're looking to discover who you are. And good chances are, if you're plugging into me, you're looking to create some kind of way to actually get that out to people so that you could share your gifts with other people so that you can help transform this planet. And we're going to be talking all about how to unlock your spiritual gifts and share that with others so you can share your gifts with other people and make a difference. And Sarah's going to be sharing her story and uh, how she did it. And she's going to be helping you out also with a process to unblocking some of the uh, limitations that may be around sharing your gifts. So we're going to dive into all that and more. Now, before we dive into Sarah's expertise and we jump into that conversation, once again, thank you so much for pressing play. If it's the first time that you're ever pressing play on the inside scoop or connecting with me, I want to thank you so much. You know, there are, again, there are millions of things that you could be watching right now, but you decide to invest in yourself and watch this, and I'm really grateful for it. I'm going to make sure that you get a ton of value. Now, if it is the first time, you may be wondering, well, who exactly are you? And uh, what is this whole Freedom Pinners deal that you got on the go? Which are two great questions. So first of all, my name is Coach Nick. I'm the co-founder of the Freedom Pinners Club. I'm the author of the book, How to Become a Freedom Pinner, 10 Ingredients to Living Your Freedom Pinner Lifestyle. Over the last several years, I've been training coaches and healers to generate more sales online without using any ads so that you can become a Freedom Pinner as well. So what exactly is a Freedom Pinner? Well, a Freedom Pinner is someone who works when they want, where they want, whenever they want, with whoever they want, doing the thing you love to do. You've got a calling, you've got a mission, a gift, you've got knowledge or a service that you know you are meant to bring out to the world in a big way. The club is the place where you can come to get equipped with the tools, the strategies, and the support to creating that as your reality. Now, by that definition, your guest today, Sarah Ashley Wheeler, is a freedom pinner because she is bringing her story and her gifts, and she is helping people in a big way. She's a visionary mentor and an energy healer, and she is your guest today on the Inside Scoop. Sarah, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate uh, you spending some time with us and connecting. And uh, we're going to dive into uh, Sarah's expertise in, in just a little bit. But before we do, I do invite you, whether you're watching this live or watching the recording, if you're watching it on Facebook, go ahead, hit that like button and love button and send some of those bubbles across the screen. If you happen to be watching it on the YouTube channel, give it one of those thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can get updated when new videos get uh, uploaded. Uh, leave some comments below. One thing that I love, love, love about the social media platform as opposed to, let's say, traditional media is the interaction. You know, it's not just a conversation between Sarah and myself. It's between Sarah, myself and you. So we invite you to leave comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Absolutely love to see where people are tuning in from. We've got a global audience, so let us know where you're coming in from. And the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is share this video out. There are so many people right now that are waking up to their true nature as spirit souls. They're realizing, I'm not my body. I'm not my mind. I'm soul. But so many people are also struggling to unleash those spiritual gifts that God gave us and to use them in such a powerful way on the planet. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So share this video out so that we can spread this message to as many souls as possible and help some people along the way on their spiritual path. So, Sarah, let's uh, dive into this. But let's learn a little bit about you, because I don't know that, that I don't know anybody, at least it wasn't me that just woke up one day and said, you know, I think I'm going to help people with their spiritual gifts. Right. You know, so how did you get to the point where you're at today doing the type of work uh, work that you do today? Yeah, totally. You know what? I feel that ever since I was little, I had a big calling. And here's how I knew. So I came into this earth one pound, five ounces, four months premature. 
and had a one to two percent chance of living. So automatically, I think that I knew at such a young age, and I don't actually think that it takes like going through something like that to like crack you wide open. But for me, it was just like I was always curious about that. I was always curious about like, wow, I really struggled to to be here. And so, you know, that Mm. must mean something. And so at a young age, I just put the hat of curiosity on and I started searching. Like I wanted answers of like, why me? Like what, like what, what, what was that all about? And so through that cracking wide open and the soul discovery journey that I really went on, it just like, what, what, sorry. (laughs) Um, just got me really, really curious about the spiritual journey and about awakening and all of those things and knowing that like, wow, like I actually have gifts that I can tap into um, to first heal myself and heal other people. So um, for me, it started at a very, very young age, being super sensitive, being intuitive and feeling like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. I think I feel like a Mm -hmm. lot of people um, came to me for advice and um, I I had that like people pleasing mentality. And I always thought that something was wrong with me for a very, 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 very long time. And when I started uncovering that and removing the blocks and the layers and looking within that of like, wait, nothing's actually wrong with me. Why do I feel this way? Right. And diving into that and knowing that as an empath and a person that can feel so much, there's something within that. Um, And so on my journey, I'm from Nebraska and I moved to Nebraska to California in search of this. I think that was a Mm. really big drive of like, I feel like my entire life I've been seeking this approval outside of myself. And just one day I like got angry and mad and feeling all the feelings. And I'm like, wait, like, I I know that I'm here for a reason. I could feel it in my gut. I could feel it like in my heart. And I'm like, okay, I need to get out of this space. So I got my car, I moved 2000 miles away without a place to stay, without a job, any of that. And I just was like determined to like know myself better than anyone else knew me. And Mm. that was like my driving force. I think that um, you can call it emotions driving, you can call it, you know, whatever, but I was almost like resentful. Like I was almost like in this like low energy space where I just needed to know. Like I think a lot of people are there right now where they're just like, I just need to know why things are the way they are, right? Instead of like flowing with life and letting life, life just unravel and enjoying the journey and that was kind of that driving force of like I just needed to know all these answers so I went on this soul discovery journey and from there I got my first reading by an energy healer and in that moment I I learned about energy I learned about tools I learned about all of these different things that I didn't know before right it wasn't like I was just like born (laughs) born in here right like I, I had to overcome my triumphs and all of that but I really think that what propelled me very very quickly on my spiritual journey from going to knowing nothing about energy to a year later being an energy healer and knowing about the Kashic records and speaking light language and all of these things was like I put that hat on and I knew I was determined to uncover every single block and every single limitation um, that I could that was ready to release that was ready to let go and I found my gifts through that. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, it's pretty inspiring, right? Many people wouldn't, even though they may desire, they wouldn't get in their car with no money, you know, drive 2000 kilometers away, not knowing where to stay. Um, but, but you did. And I, and I think that people, it, it, you know, I, I appreciate the reflection because I've done some stuff like that in my life too, where it's just like, yeah, no, we're going somewhere else. And, you know, you feel that calling and many people are limited to that. But you also had some other challenges within that story, right? Within like, you know, the people around you and they supported you. Would you talk a little bit about that and share, you know, how uh, how those experiences affected you as well? Yeah, totally. So 
the outside looking in, you know, being able to make that leap, right? I was, I was scared every single step of the way. I didn't know what I was doing every single step of the way. Like mm-hmm. my parents didn't talk to me four months after I moved to California. I didn't have like the, the like-minded people in my life, like really ever, like maybe a right. handful of people, maybe three people that I could sit here and I could still call today. But it was, it was through that, like almost like, searching for my tribe, searching for people that understood, people that were in the personal development journey, people that that got things the way that I got them. And I think through that, I really had to move through like feeling judged or, or feeling like I was doing something wrong or feeling like um, people didn't understand me, all of that. And I just learned to like notice, I learned to notice it. And I learned to like, I think ask myself this question one day, I'm like, wait a minute, is this even from me? Right. Is all right. these feelings of like these people not getting me right. That's that people pleasing syndrome that we like lock in and that becomes our identity where I just like, wait a minute. No, like I don't need the whole world to like me or get me or, or vibe with me, I was born to stand out. Right. And so I think that as I locked in those beliefs along the way of like, I don't need my dad's approval to do this thing, even though my entire life, I sought his approval for everything. Like, is this the right job to do? Is this the right career to go in? Is this the right car to, to buy and all of these different things. And I think through that, like even this year I was faced with like, talking to my dad about my business and how I manifested an office and how I do Reiki and energy, even though he doesn't understand it, right? He doesn't get it. It's not his world. I was able to like say it anyways, like mm. got, I got to that point where I didn't care what his reaction was. So I right. think it like eased, like I wasn't pushing down the emotions where I needed that approval, approval anymore. I'm just like, I'm doing this regardless. Right. Yeah. So if anyone, you know, has that block or that limitation where you feel like, I don't know what people are going to think of me. I'm afraid that people are going to judge me. All of those things like notice, like, is that actually yours? Like, is that block or limitation actually yours? Or is it just created? Right? Is it just the thought that you keep thinking over and over and over? Right? So I still move through that. (laughs) (laughs) Every single level, every single layer, I'm constantly moving through that but I can recognize it now and I can identify because I put that hat of curiosity on um, and I wanted to know what my blocks were anytime I'm faced with that or anytime like there's a mirror reflection of like maybe someone opts out of a program or someone wants a refund right like Mm -hmm. now at this layer that's kind of where it it comes through or I get unfollowers on Instagram or like whatever whatever the case is I'm I look at that I'm like, okay, good. But what in me allowed that to occur? What in me was I available for that thing or a little bit of chaos or something to happen where that was okay, right? Now I look at my frequency and my vibration of that core root of where that is or where I allowed that to happen. So yeah, love it. Fantastic. So I, I'm just going to read a few of the comments uh, uh, out and just acknowledge some of the people here are with us, and then we'll uh, we're going to continue on this conversation because you've touched on a few things that uh, that are really profound, and, and I'd like to dive into. So first of all, hey, my god sister here, Annabelle is with us. Hey, Annabelle, thanks so much for uh, for being here and tuning in. And Ihan, uh, Ihan, I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. Uh, says Namaste, dears. Thanks so much. And Brian Cardoza is here, says, much love, Nick, and nice to meet you, Sarah. And he's tuning in from North Carolina. Fantastic. So we got North Carolina in the house. And we've got uh, Ahan is tuning in from Ankara in Turkey. So fantastic. We got Turkey in the house. And Cecilia is here with us and says hello. Hey, Cecilia. And again, if you guys are watching this live, uh, you know, give it a like, give it a love. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you've got questions, you know, directly for Sarah or have your thoughts, you want to jump into the conversation, please do. Uh, we, we invite you to do that for sure. So, uh, look, you know, I, I, I'm just going to think that, that, you know, what you're saying, it, it makes total sense. And there's a certain level of freedom that comes with the ability to not seek other people's approval. But I would say, at least from my perspective, though, the reality is that most of us are seeking approval from outside sources. What allows someone 
to move to that space? Like what allowed you to actually move to that space where, hey, you know what, uh, dad, I love you, but I don't need your approval. What, al what allowed you to go there? Because I think that would free so many people uh, in, in such a deep way. But yet so many people are stuck in that. I'm not going to do anything unless someone else approves of it. Mm -hmm, totally. So for me, I had to look back at all the times I did that, right? Almost like a timeline of mm -hmm. where I noticed that that didn't work anymore. The results that I actually desired weren't coming through because I could feel that resistance of where I was looking outside myself. So for me, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have to approve of myself. Right. At, at the core of it, you only know how to love you. You only know what you need and you can only give that to yourself, right? Like no one else can love me in the world like I can, right? No one else can give me approval in the world like I can. So it starts mm. within. And I think that locking that in of like, I'm just going to look in the mirror and be determined to know myself better than anyone else knows me, I think will release and, and cause that, um, that resistance or that block or that limitation to kind of subside a little bit, to dissolve. Um, and if you feel like that, you have that, that is an awareness that's coming through that's ready to be released and removed. Beautiful. Uh, you just said a key word there, which is awareness. Right. And, and, and anybody who's on this path knows that there's different levels of awareness that we can attain. And sometimes we think, oh, wow, I'm so aware. And then all of a sudden new stuff comes up like, oh, well, I wasn't aware of that. So, you know, right. So how do we actually like what is the practical steps that you've taken to become more aware of your own limitations um, within yourself? Totally. So here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold <laughs> on, everyone. Here's the, thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's what I know for sure. Like, if let's talk about something that everyone talks about, everyone vibes with, it's manifesting. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your current, if you don't have the thing that you want, right? You're desiring money, you're desiring clients, you're desiring business growth, all of these things. If you don't actually have it in your now reality, in your physical reality, there's blocks and limitations in the way. So time, freedom, health, relationships, money, business, when you can look at all of those different areas and you can start to rate yourself, hey, how do I feel on a scale of one to 10 with my time? How do I feel on a scale of one to 10 with my relationships? How do I feel on a scale of one to 10 with my finances, right? And then from there, when you can get this overall kind of bird's eye view of like, hey, then you can dive in and notice like, well, what do I believe about this? Like, what are my blocks and limitations? What do I feel mm. like are stopping me from there? And so I honor and I love things that come up. I have a mindset success ritual that I do every single morning. And like, it's not like you just remove one block and then that's it, right? Your life is the way that it, what, you know, is designed to be or you've reached this level of success or like whatever. Every single day I'm dissolving the blocks. It's by layers, right? It's an onion. You're peeling back the onion layer by layer, energy by energy, right? And until you can get to the core root of it. So I think a lot of times people are doing the mindset work and affirmations and mantras and all of these things. And not that those aren't good, but you can say all of those things. But if your body doesn't actually believe it, right? If you say, hey, I am wealthy and your body isn't vibrating at that frequency, your body doesn't actually believe it. So then you can go into those blocks and you can notice like, well, why don't I believe this? Like, what do I, what do I believe about this thing? Right? Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. We got to, I just want to acknowledge a couple, uh, uh, just uh, Cecilia who says she's from Chicago. Nice. So the Windy City, we got Chicago in the house. And there's actually a, a question coming in for you. And uh, says, well, it says at Wheeler. So I'll call you Sarah. Oh. I won't call you Wheeler. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Wheeler, what do you have? So Sarah, do you, uh, do you practice yoga? If yes, what school of yoga? And if not, what do you practice regularly? Mm. 
So what I'm really into right now that I practice is a lot of breath work. Yoga, yes, I love yoga, but I don't necessarily practice that. I'll go to yoga class here and there. Um, But what I like to do is a lot of breath work, a lot of tuning in, a lot of opening up my chakras and channel just by movement, by dance um, is what I do. So a lot of meditation too. So yoga sometimes, like if I feel like, I need to take a yoga class today. Like, I'll go do it. But if it's not in alignment with me, then I don't do it. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. So, um, you know, we're talking lots about beliefs because ultimately it comes down to this idea of beliefs, right? And 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 the, being aware of our beliefs and the different layers as you, you know, compared it to the onion, peeling back these different layers of beliefs. Are, where do the beliefs come from? I mean, do we just come into this world with them? Are they given to us? If they're given to us, where where... Where do we pick up our beliefs along the way? Totally. So here's the thing. I believe that you come in with no blocks, right? You're pure love and light. There are no blocks. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. kundalini yoga, totally. Um, I, I do like that actually sometimes. Um, so if you come in with no blocks, right, then why do you feel like you've lived this lifetime out with blocks and limitations in the way? And so everything is just energy. So I believe that you pick up things, you choose to pick up things that are going to move you forward on your journey. So there are things in the womb space of when you were in your mom's womb, everything that she felt and all of her blocks and insecurities and whatever, like Mm. you've taken that on energetically and you pick up things from zero to age eight, from teachers, from friends, from mom and dad. And so it's almost like the way that you decide or the way that you choose, like, hey, I'm just going to grab that energy and I'm just going to like take it on myself is because you actually want to to feel loved. You wanted love. So for instance, for me, my parents got divorced at a really, really, really young age. I was three years old. And so with me being the love and light little child that I was, right, I noticed that. And from both sides of the the spectrum, it was like, I love them so much. And I wanted to feel love that I'm like, I don't want you to feel pain, right? Like, I don't Mm. want you to go through that. Like, you're not alone as a pure love and light soul, right? So I, I just decided in that moment to choose, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to take it on myself so they don't have to feel it. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to take it on, right? And then through your journey, 14, 15, 16, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? You can notice. And there's a process that I teach in my Dissolve program and that I work with one-on-one clients through that I'll take you guys through. And we go back to that. We go back to the core root of that moment that you decided, hey, I'm going to take that on. Mm. So Powerful, powerful. I, and I know that you're going to take us through a, an unblocking process right here and now. So we're going to uh, we're going to dive into that. Uh, we do have a question and uh, just a couple comments. So first of all, uh, Cecilia says hey, it's all about love. Totally. I-, I would sing for you, but trust me, nobody wants that. <laughs> so <laughs> I love you enough not to sing for you. So I appreciate that. And hey, my god brother here, Kelvin is here with us, who says Haribo uh, Nakula brother. So why? Okay, so just so you know, if you Nakula is, uh, I was just initiated into the order of Bhakti Yoga. As just a couple of days ago, I went through my spiritual initiation from our, our guru, Bhakti Mar Swami, and I was given the spiritual name Nakula Das. So that's why he's calling me that. So if anybody's like, what, well, who the heck is Nakula? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's what that is. And uh, Cecilia, uh, uh, Cecilia says, healing our wounds, absolutely. And, uh, and Calvin says, I feel that awareness so often, Sarah, and I have struggled with taking and maintaining energy. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing, Calvin. Calvin's a great guy and uh, and full of love. And uh, there's a question also coming in uh, for you, uh, Sarah, so I want to get to you. And then we're going to get to this unblocking uh, process. So um, uh, Janine says, what do you do in your morning routine that you mentioned? Awesome. Hey, Janine, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend. Um, uh, what's up, so- girlfriend? <laughs> what I do in my morning routine here's the thing before I tell you my process I teach people to figure out to go within to listen to their intuition about what they most need so I'm going to share with you a journal process that I do First, I meditate. I connect to the lover above energy, the earth energy. I bring it in. And then I set my intentions for the day of anything that I want to call in 
to my world, anything that I want to experience. And I, I visualize it as like a ball of love. And then I just kind of tune in of like, who needs this right now? And I'll send it to people like maybe my brother or my mom or friends or someone who I met on Facebook or something like that. And I'm constantly sending that energy out. Right. And then from there, I kind of tune in and I'm just like, okay, what do I need to do today? If I already had my big picture vision locked in, what would I be doing? And kind of that's like my to-do list. That's that's what I start to do. So I just write it down. And um, from there, anything that comes through, like I just check, hey, do I need to do a clearing session? Hey, do I need to juice today, right? Do I need to do more journal work? And I just kind of check in and see. So that's kind of what I do every single morning. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. That's powerful. And, you know, I find like morning routines, like, you know, as uh, Bhakti Yoga practitioners, a Hare Krishna, we chant in the morning, right? You know, we do, uh, we get up in the morning, we do mantra meditation, right? And I know uh, some, you know, people are doing offerings, to, some people are doing yoga, some people need to go for a walk. I really like that, you know, that idea of like, find what works for you, right? And, and but takes us a mentorship as well, right? Like, if you need that guidance, because I think sometimes, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this, Sarah, is like, Sometimes I think people get caught on, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? I don't know what to do. Someone tell me what to do. So how do we balance that idea of like taking instruction, but also listening to our own heart and soul? Yeah. Well, if you're asking yourself that question of, I don't know what to do, right? That's an indication that you're not going within, right? That you're not tuning into your own energy and your own vibration to see what you actually need. So my mm -hmm. first tip for you would be put the hat of curiosity on and just go within and start with a meditation um, or do something that you feel drawn to do, right? Um, instead of living outside, right? And so, yeah, t let me just, let me just tune in and see. Hold on one second. You know what's right for you by the way it feels. So if it feels good to do yoga, if it feels good to chant, if it feels good to do a meditation, like do that and just see how it works. Yeah, I love it. Self-care with awesome. Uh, yeah, so mine's, uh, Brian says, mine is create art of self-care with lifting and fasting. So fantastic. Totally. And Cecilia's got a question that I'm going to just share the question, but we're not going to answer it right now. That's the funny part about this. <laughs> so Cecilia says, where can I find you online? You're going to have to wait and find out. <laughs> so uh, actually, yeah. So what we're going to do is now you have a little bit of an unblocking process that you're going to give us uh, and we're going to go through that. And then we're going to find out where you guys can connect with Sarah and learn more about her and be able to uh, continue uh, on this journey with her. So Sarah, I'm going to sort of hand over the inside scoop over to you and have you lead us through this unblocking process. Awesome. So for the people that are tuning in online um, so that we could do this for you, I'm curious, what is the one block that you feel like you have? Did you want me to answer something? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I think there's always, a, as, as a, I'm going to put it into a, a context of, because uh, I teach sales. Right. And uh, I, I always think that there's this block of, oh, what if I'm not good enough to be teaching totally. this? What if I'm not good enough? You know, there are people that are better at sales than me. Right. You know, so what, who am I to teach this? That, that kind of nagging little voice there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just do the whole shebang of I don't feel good enough. Okay. okay. So what I want everyone to do is to settle in and close your eyes. Tuning in, take a big deep breath in through your mouth and out. Good. And, and again, and out. Awesome. Now what I want you to do is just ask yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, what number do I not feel good enough? What is that number? Lock it in. Just notice the first thing that comes to you. Good. And when you have that number, don't judge the number, right? If you feel like it's low, we're going to clear that. And we're just going to see, and I'm just going to show you how easy this is to shift. So now what I want you to do with that number is I want you to place it in your heart center. Good. 
And from this space, I want you to take your awareness up 300 feet above you, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And I want you to connect to the cosmic universal white light. And above you, there's a door. And this door is always open, ready to connect with you. It's the energy of where you go to connect to pray. Awesome. Cool. Good. And I want you to pour in this white light all the way in, all the way in through your crown. Good. All the way in through your throat and your ears. Good. And your third eye. Good. All the way in through your heart in your stomach, bringing in this white cosmic light all the way in through your stomach, through your knees, through your feet, through your legs, all the way out through the, your feet. Good. All the way out through the ground. Good. Now what I want you to do is see like there's a trampoline underneath you and I want you to bounce up this earth cosmic energy all the way up through your feet and your knees and your legs, and your root chakra, all the way out through your heart space, good. Surrounding yourself in a bubble, 360 degrees around you, amazing, perfect. And I want you to expand this bubble out through the room that you're in, just good, expand it out, perfect, amazing. Now I want you to ask yourself, what was the first age I remember not feeling good enough? What was the first age I felt not good enough? Good. And whatever comes through, just notice it, love it. Now what I want you to do is I want you to notice where's this energy at in your body? Where are you holding on to it? Where's the tightness that you feel that's linked to this age? What's going on? Where is it? It might be in your heart space. It might be in your solar plexus, and your stomach. Good, I just want you to notice it, feel it, good. Now what I want you to do is I want you to bring in that white cosmic energy and I just want you to ask it to leave, command it to leave, dissolve it all the way in, dissolving where that energy is stored in your system, knowing that it's not yours, knowing that all you wanted was love at that specific, specific age. That's all you want it. Good. And I just wish you to command it to leave. Dissolve out of your field. Dissolve out of your field. All the way out. All the way out. Good. And you can breathe. Feeling the shift. Good. Amazing. Pouring in more white light, more white light to completely dissolve this out of where you feel not worthy, where you feel not good enough. Good. Dissolve it out completely out of your field. Amazing. Awesome. Take a big deep breath in and out. And when you feel like the energy has shifted, I want you to now ask yourself, on a scale of one to 10, how worthy do I feel now? Good, I'm feeling like the majority of you shifted. Good, perfect. Awesome. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Cool. Cool, thank you very much. I appreciate you're that welcome. very much. Hey guys, I'd love to uh, hear from you guys. Like how did that, you know, what did that feel? I know I feel, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm feeling such a good space. My spiritual initiation was just a couple of days ago and that whole process was a big clearing, right? So I'm like, right now I'm just like, I'm like, I'm ready to rock and open the channel and live. But, uh, but even, even in that space, you know, there's always depths and things to explore. And, and just in that exercise myself, uh, I could feel loosening up in my body, right? And deeper levels of relaxation and, and, and letting some of that tension that we hold in our bodies go. So that's wonderful. Um, so first of all, Kelvin says, uh, I need to get back to journaling. It helped me set intentions and clear out energies and restore others. Thanks for the inspiration, Sarah. Uh, wonderful. And Cecilia says, I really like you, girl. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. 
And uh, Ian says, uh, being far from the matting crowd. Thank you for sharing. And uh, hey, Anique's here with us. Hey, Anique, thanks so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, and Cecilia says she feels like a 10. And that was so nice. Perfect for me. And uh, Janine says, love it, Sarah. And uh, Kelvin says, this was wonderful. Thank you so much. I feel like I can breathe again, like my positive energy multiplied. Totally awesome. Good. Wonderful. Wow. Thank you so much, Sarah. Tell everybody out there how they can get a hold of you, connect with you, and continue to learn and grow from you. Awesome. So my website is sarahashleywheeler.com. You can find me over on Instagram, Sarah Ashley Wheeler, or you can connect with me on Facebook. That is linked to this video. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. And hey, Karen's here who says, thanks, Sarah, first timer. Hey, thanks, Karen, for, uh, for tuning in. Appreciate it. So, guys, I do encourage you to reach out to Sarah, connect with her, you know, uh, like her, fill up your social media with positive people, fill it up with people who are on the spiritual path. You know, social media is a tool, just like everything else is a tool in this material world. And you can use that tool to enhance your life by filling it up with positive people, with like-minded people, with people who are, who are creating spiritual uh, consciousness on this planet, or you can fill it up with other stuff. I encourage you to fill it up with this stuff so that your social media page becomes a place of inspiration. Sangha, it's a wonderful community here uh, in the side of a Facebook group. We've got coaches and healers uh, from all around the world who are inspiring each other and keeping each other uplifted so we can make a greater impact in the world. So I'll leave it. I'll leave the I'll leave the I'll leave the link in the comments below and uh, and you can join us there if you'd like. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you on the next edition of the Inside Scoop. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Bye. <laughs>